ready for your weekly dose of pixie dust with Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly. And I'm Patrick Dougal. And Patrick, there is so much movie and TV news this week. Oh yeah. It's crazy. There's just like tons of it. So we're just going to jump right into Which it. Which makes me excited. Movie news is always fun. Movie news is good. First of all, here at Disneyland, at Disney California Adventure, more specifically, we're getting an Ant-Man preview. In, like, the best location possible. The most <laughs> perfect location possible for an Ant-Man preview. Bugs Life Theater. Mm -hmm. I love the previews in that theater in general, mm -hmm. just because I feel like that has the most special effects to play around with. Yeah. And it's always fun. And I mean, that's just kind of cool. So, I mean, I'm not super excited about mm -hmm. Ant-Man in general. I can take it and leave it. Yeah, it's one of those movies that, like, hopefully they'll have a free preview somewhere that we can go see. Uh, even still, I don't know if I will. I think you were going to drag me, weren't you? I'll still see it, but yeah. I'm not like, oh, I can't wait to see it. The suit's going to be there as well. They're going to display okay. the suit. Cool. But Ant-Man's, like, this big. So is the suit, like, that big? It is. For those of you listening... I have about a half an inch between my fingers. They actually, they actually have a performer that wears it as well. Cute. Yeah. Very cute. That's big. So that's coming here. That was in place of, we mentioned earlier how Epcot is getting the inside out preview. We're not mm -hmm. getting that. So we're nope. um, so we're kind of getting Ant-Man, which is better, I think, because Ant-Man doesn't come out till July, whereas Inside Out. Has it been playing at Epcot for a little while? Uh, for the, like two, three weeks. Okay. Two, yeah, two weeks. So it's a pretty short preview and of course they usually run them several weeks after the movie comes out still but we're getting something better but we'll talk about that we'll later. talk about that later <laughs> yes but ant-man uh june 19th begins a disney california adventure mm -hmm. so that's cool something that is becoming a bit controversial in the disney movie world everybody has their opinions on it is this whole remakes of animated to live action yeah and now it's been announced that the segment uh night on bald mountain from Fantasia, is being made into a live-action movie. Chernabog. Chernabog. <laughs> if you don't know, Chernabog is the name of the, is it devil? Gargoyle The devil gargoyle-ish, devil-ish character. And if you don't know what Night on a Bald Mountain is, it's dun, 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 which you probably know from Fantasmic yeah. or I think it's in World of Color now? I think the new World of Color has it, if I'm remembering correctly. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But that's not on Bald Mountain. Of course, it's originally a classical piece. But I think it's funny, with every piece in Fantasia, at least for me, when I hear it, even like the Nutcracker stuff, mm -hmm. I think of Fantasia before I think of the Nutcracker. <laughs> and I think most people probably feel that way if you're a Disney freak. Um, so yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Night on Bald Mountain? I think it's a little weird to be live action because let's face it, it's going to be CG anyway. It's like yeah. going to be animated practically. Unless, I don't know. Well, the thing about Fantasia, it's like all music. Yeah. So like, are they adding well, a story around it? Well, the whole thing is with Fantasia is they've made stories based on classical scores. So uh -huh. some of these classical stories did have these stories related to them to begin with. Mm -hmm. Some of the, them did not. It was like an original Disney idea. Um, I don't know if Night on Bald Mountain, if that was the original story. I have a feeling it probably was because there's a mountain and, you know, that's the name of the song and everything. Like Disney didn't call it that. That yeah. was the name of the classical piece. I, I'm sure Chernabog was created by Disney. Uh, you know what I always wish? Tell me this wouldn't be awesome. Okay. Okay. So you know how the end of Fantasmic at Disneyland, we have the fantastic Maleficent Dragon? Uh-huh. I think the finale of Fantasmic at Walt Disney World should have been Chernabog. Because the set, unlike ours, which is Tom Sawyer Island, is a giant mountain. Mm -hmm. How cool would it have been for a giant Chernabog puppet to pop up behind that mountain? Well, I always thought that the volcano at Tokyo Sea would have been an also really cool to have a giant like they could even do it like inflatable almost yeah but. that's what i was thinking inflatable uh, i just think that would be a nice change to phantasmic at walt disney World. super cool and then he can breathe fire just for the heck why of not because <laughs> that'd be awesome but yeah it's happening they, they have just started production on this not not production i'm sorry pre-production yeah. like it's not written or anything so it'll be interesting to see where it goes like i said before 
it seems to be controversial, but mm. let's face it, we all go and see them. Oh, yeah. So they're not going to stop. Like, no matter how much we complain, we're, we're still, all going to go see it. We're still paying to see it. And, it's true. you know, I feel like what's like the furthest back one you can remember? That did this whole animated live action because for like me the first one the first one I remember is like 101 Dalmatians okay yeah which was a long time ago and so I thought that was cool like that was a unique idea they uh -huh. did it and then there was a long gap before they did it again I think the renaissance for it was Alice in Wonderland like even that I feel like after Alice there was a bit of a gap there was but I feel like was Alice Maleficent? made so much yeah what was before Maleficent was, uh, was there one immediately before that yes. I feel like there was one Maybe. that really started the insanity, mm -hmm. and now it's just nonstop announcements of animated classics becoming live action films. So you have Night on Bald Mountain to look forward to. You know what I never saw? I never saw The Sorcerer's Apprentice. I feel like I did on TV. Okay, I am not a Nicolas Cage fan. I do love Jay Baruchel though. Mm -hmm. I should see it for him. Oh, I love him. He's great. Yeah, that, I would not even throw that in this category. I throw that as like. Almost like Disney Channel original movie level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sad. I don't even know how that one did. But in any case, I digress. Um, so, yeah, that's happening. happening. <laughs> and another weird movie. Now, this one's a remake. Yeah. Apparently nothing original. Sister Act. And if you don't know this, it was a Touchstones Pictures, which is owned by Disney. Uh, we don't know if it's a remake. We don't know if it's a prequel. We don't know if it's a sequel. We don't know if Whoopi Goldberg's involved. We don't know anything. We just know they're making a Sister Act movie. This one I, I could care less about. Yeah, Sister Act's a good movie. I mean, it's like way before your time. But, I mean, it's a good movie. The sequel's all right. Actually, I think Whoopi hates the sequel, if I'm remembering correctly. Because <laughs> she came to my college and spoke, and somebody, like stood up and was like, I just want to let you know Sister Act 2 was a huge inspiration to me. And she was like, like two. She's like, really? She's like, I didn't like that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's awesome. good. Dreams yeah. crushed. Yeah, but uh yeah, yeah, I don't know. Is it necessary? Will it make money? Probably. Uh I've heard rumors, I don't know if it was rumors or wishful thinking of Raven Simone doing it, because she did it on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wonder if they'll do the musical version. Nobody's mentioned that, so I don't think that's the plan. The Alan Menken musical, which actually like takes place in the 70s, I believe. It's all okay. disco music. I think it does. But I think that's weird. Sister Act. Like, sure. Sure. It's, <laughs> Why not? I'm sure it'll make money. So, Sister Act's happening. Let's see. Okay, now something worth talking about. The Good Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Comes out on Thanksgiving. The uh, teaser trailer has come out. Now, I think if you're listening to this, you probably know that this movie's kind of had issues. Yeah. and It's been, like, handed off to people back and forth. and The reality is that this happens all the time. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't know about it. But, like, these movies, I think more often than not, even Frozen. I, yeah, Frozen, I know for a fact. It was like, uh, we threw everything away and started all over. Yeah, right, like, the summer of before the November release. Which is crazy, if you think about it. But, you know, it's a reality, you know, making movies are tough. And I think the reason why Disney, Disney Pixar movies are so good is because of the fact I feel like a lot of production companies would be completely unwilling to do that. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, we, we, can't, we just can't, we can't afford yeah. to do that. And I, I mean, I believe that's why the movies always end up so great. I think the, the fact that it was so, the big thing that everyone is saying, because it was so publicly pushed back. Mm -hmm people get that reaction but it was it's pushed back for a reason and mm -hmm. obviously they got through that reason so hopefully it, i mean i hope and it looks like it, it's got dinosaurs yeah it's golden <laughs> it'll like, be well, fine it, there's there are dinosaurs it's in pixar it. and dinosaurs yeah like, so i think we're good so i'm definitely looking forward to good dinosaur yes. the, as i mentioned their teaser did come out did you watch the teaser yes Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it kind of what we saw two years ago? At it the was Expo? the exact thing <laughs> okay. we saw at D23. <laughs> at least the first half. Yeah. At the D23 Expo in 2013, they showed the first half of that teaser. And I was like, and it's actually, I remember the audience really laughing a lot. If you haven't seen it, it's basically, they, they asked the question of, you know, the this meteor wiped out the dinosaurs. What if mm -hmm. that meteor passed the earth? And so you just see the visual of the meteor coming toward the earth. 
passing by it and all the <laughs> dinosaurs just... like heads looking up and going huh and just looking at the side like <laughs> and then go back to whatever they're doing yeah it's really funny and i remember the audience erupting in the laughter at that point i think it was like called the untitled dinosaur movie from pixar or something like i that. think i think it was th- mm, it could have been maybe i think two d23s ago still untitled because i remember them announcing it but i think the- did they announce it two expos ago yeah this has been a four-year thing yeah and i think oh, the name goodness. the name it, this was like hey we're working on like kind of what like finding dory was yeah. like so we're working on it later and then that d23 come out but they had they had the good dinosaur they had the characters all because like they had all those voice actors still there oh that's right i yeah. remember that um yeah. so like it was titled but it's it's been a work in progress it's been a long long process for that movie but um oh some uh, sad news i don't particularly care i think you do tron 3 is not happening yeah and i think we have tomorrowland to blame for this uh if you don't know tomorrowland's numbers aren't doing what they want mm-hmm. i guess it's the same genre uh it's it's really funny because i mean we've done a whole episode on tomorrowland I enjoyed Tomorrowland for what it was. I liked it more than you, I think. Mm-hmm. The amount of like negative things I've been hearing people say about it, kind of mind-boggling. I think it was just. I think part part really to blame is like the marketing standpoint. Like, the, well, yeah, the Walt stuff being cut was ridiculous. Yeah, like like the amount of like Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland is all going to be like about Disney, and like judging by the D twenty three panel that they had two years ago, like. It seemed like it'd be heavily influenced by Disney, and I remember when they were filming in the parks. It was like, oh, they're filming in the yeah, parks, yeah. and it was, it was only like a couple minutes of the movie, and it was just like and right at the beginning. So I was like, I don't once know. again, here's, I forgive that simply because when you're shooting a movie and two years in advance, when they were doing the promotion for D twenty three, look in an editing room, things change. Yeah, I get that. The thing that I say shame on you for was putting Walt in the TV commercials. Doing that, you, they knew at that point Walt mm-hmm. wasn't in the movie. So that's like shame on them. Yeah. Not cool. You basically lied to us. So that's a problem. But in any case, people are hating it. And and because of that, I think Tron 3 was canceled. Um, I, I haven't seen any of the Tron movies, to be completely honest. Never seen a single one. But I was really hoping for Electronica to come back at DCA. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I was excited about. Mm-hmm. You are a fan of the movies or what? I, d- I, did, I did like the Tron Legacy. And I, I would, I like, I wouldn't have been like super into like crazy seeing Tron like three, but like, I would, I would want it to happen. Like, I still want it to happen. And a lot of fans do because they've actually started a petition mm-hmm. to save Tron 3. Yeah, it's savetron3.com. Yeah. You can go there. And they've got quite a few signatures. I think they're doing this thing through petition.org. Mm-hmm. And now you can buy t shirts that say save Tron 3. So there's definitely a fan base. I think the, the hardest thing about it was the, it was them coming out a few months ago saying, hey, we're in pre-production of Tron 3. Yeah. So that gets everyone going. And then to just be like, yeah, no, we're cutting it. Yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. Like, I actually it, feel bad for the people who were excited about it. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, it stinks. Funny enough, uh, Olivia Wilde, who plays one of the main characters in the series, she like tweeted out. She's like, calm down, guys. I don't have to go on a diet now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, well, well, at, least she's, <laughs> well, at least she's got a good uh, attitude about the situation. Uh, beyond that, let's see. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Ooh. which we all knew was happening. Mm-hmm. And we're all excited about because basically Chris Pratt's a rock star. I would really like to know if anybody out there doesn't like Chris Pratt. If you don't like Chris <laughs> Pratt, tweet me because we need to have a conversation about this. Like this is – I love Chris Pratt. Mm-hmm. I just love that man. Everything – his on-screen presence, like his social media, his he just seems like the nicest guy to the point that I'm like, there has to be something wrong with him. We'll see how he does in Indiana Jones. I don't even care. Like, uh, even, uh, even, uh, yeah, he, <laughs> I have, I think he's going to be Indiana Jones. I would say they'd be stupid not to. Uh-huh. I would. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. I would rather see Chris Pratt play Indiana Jones than Harrison Ford come back and do it. I said it. I said it. Harrison Ford's old. Harrison Ford is old. <laughs> He's had his his four movies, and uh, I think it's time to pass the hat. Mm-hmm. 
So in any case, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy. too. So um, they are in. Was it? The, oh, the, the script is finished, mm-hmm. which is exciting. And they've they've always announced like one of the big things a Guardians Galaxy is find out who Star Lord's father is, because obviously he's born of two different periods. Mm-hmm. So he has a uh, father out there that we don't know about, but Chris Pratt does because mm-hmm. he's read the script. So. It's done. Uh, they have a release date May fifth of twenty seventeen. There was that huge Marvel calendar of release. Yeah, I think dates. it's, it's twenty seventeen. Either that, or I have a typo here. Uh, I think it's twenty seventeen. They're saying it's at least. Oh, it has to be actually. If mm-hmm. they just finished the script, May fifth, twenty seventeen. They're saying it's at least a trilogy. So we have at least two more movies coming out. I actually think this would make a really good animated TV series. Oh yeah, I think that that's something they should think about. Oh yeah, especially like you can just do Rocket Raccoon and Groot. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and be- Groot is back in mm-hmm. the script, so uh, yeah. That I I mean I liked Guardians of the Galaxy, and I'm not even a superhero guy, so they're doing something right there. Yes, bring more of that. Uh, what else is going on? Oh well, you can talk about it because you kind of teased it before. Uh yes. So we were mentioning Inside Out before, and well. Epcot's got a little exclusive preview of the movie. We unfortunately didn't get it here over at Disneyland, but we got a little consolation prize. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think, think it's better, to yeah. be honest. Uh, I think we've mentioned this before, but uh, uh, Disney Pixar Play Parade is getting a little pre-parade featuring the characters from Inside Out. Pre-pre. Pre-parade. dun 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 Pre-pre. Anywho. Yeah, so yeah. the characters of Inside Out, we'd been theorizing maybe they're puppets or whatever. I feel like I've seen full costumed characters of the emotions. Mm-hmm. So maybe meet and greets. I think this <sighs> was at, I think this was at the premiere. I saw some photos. I, I was going through real quickly, so I could be mistaken. But I feel like I saw like you know full on fuzzy characters. So maybe meet and greets with the different emotions, which would be fun. They're definitely getting a pre parade thing. I'm assuming a float. Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of cool. Inside Out, I'm telling you folks, I think Inside Out is going to be huge. huge. Like, obviously all Pixar movies are huge. Even the Cars movies are huge. I'm telling you, huge. Like, up huge. Mm -hmm. Like, heart-wrenching, gonna kill somebody because you made me cry that much huge. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Is that a real thing? That's That's a a real thing. That's a real thing. (laughs) It's a real thing. Yeah. So... uh, I'm excited for Inside Out. Um, I don't know if I'm emotionally ready, but I'm ready. I'm going to be a wreck. Like, there's just no question about it. I'm going to be a wreck. Although I said that about the Disneyland 60 stuff, and, and I got through that all right. But Pixar, it's, it's Pixar hard. Pixar is rough, man. It's just rough. And was, I've seen about 20 minutes of the film, and I, I was just sitting there watching 20 minutes of it. I was like, up and down, emotional. I'm laughing. Oh, how sad. Yeah, mm. It's just... It's just gonna kill you it's emotional yeah it's it's emotional emotions emotions I, emotional one of the best movie slogans of all time is uh when what do they call it a major emotion picture you know how like most movies a major motion <laughs> picture <laughs> they call it <laughs> a major emotion picture i was like whoever thought of that <laughs> deserves whatever paycheck they got or if it's a good paycheck i'm assuming it's you, get a, you get a round, round of, of applause, applause from dctc yeah that's what you get oh so good Let's see. Before we move on from movie news here, I just want to mention one thing that I think is super cool. Having said that, I have never, ever bought a balloon in Disneyland in my life. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning for that is just because it seems really inconvenient. Uh, I feel like if you're going to do it, maybe if you're on vacation for a week, buy it, leave it in the hotel room, the kid will love it, whatever. I think I might buy a Disneyland balloon. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I know what you're talking about. Just say it. Death Star balloons in Tomorrowland. At Disneyland, I'm sure of, I'm not sure of Walt Disney World or anywhere else. No, I have not heard of anything over there. But, like, it seemed to come out of nowhere. I mean, I don't know if there's, like, balloon update news. There should be. (laughs) Tomorrow, we will see a balloon, a Disney balloon Twitter account, Breaking news. Yeah. Disney balloon updates. Popping news. Popping Popping news. news. Although we don't want that popping. But I, I, like, saw these, like, randomly spur up. I'm like... Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. And I've, I've seen them in the parks. Uh, they light up at night. There's a little, like, white light that flashes. The That'd be cool if they blow up. Oh, my God. If there's, like, a trigger or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, little, like, little, like, confetti. Like, confetti. Yeah. <laughs> like red confetti. <laughs> That'd be awesome. A little Darth Vader miniature, like, <laughs> Yeah. But uh, the Death Star balloons, kind of cool, is all I'm saying. I'm still waiting for Madame Leota balloon. Why this doesn't exist, I will never understand. A floating... It's coming. 
floating head but light watch up. Watch this Halloween, and you're like, they took, they took my idea. Ugh. That's happened to me before. I'm convinced a season of Survivor happened because of an idea I tweeted. I'm just going to write it in a Disney survey, see if it happens. Yeah, totally. I mean, seriously, a Madame Leota balloon. It's, it's brainless. That should just happen. So before we move on from movie news, I almost forgot we were talking about live action earlier. Mm-hmm. And there was other news that came out that uh, about a little fairy called Tinkerbell. Yes. And supposedly Reese Witherspoon is gonna be playing tinkerbell yeah do you remember who played live action tinkerbell before her this should have been my trivia it wasn't a Disney liza movie, minnelli though. no <laughs> <laughs> pixie test mama oh that'd be so great <laughs> uh, <Run it. laughs> you got liza minnelli on the show no um julia roberts huh? ah yes not disney but now he gets, yeah reese witherspoon is tinkerbell i think uh, eh, appropriate choice physically once again, this whole live action from animation thing is a little overkill, but I, I, f- well, what I've heard is it's actually going to be the, um, it's going to be like Maleficent, where mm-hmm. it's the story of Peter Pan from Tink's point of view. I think that could be really interesting, personally, because she's kind of a B slash star. Yeah. Slash, slash, slash. Kind of, you know. Yeah. I, I um, I always view not saying Reese Witherspoon's old, but I feel she's a, a little older than the character would be. Yeah. I feel like Tink's like a I don't know twenties twenty year old fairy. I mean, do fairies age? Well, they're thousands of years old. Okay, then Tink's like a th- then it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm okay with it. Yeah, no, I think it could be interesting. So that's fun. And let's see what else we got here. So that was the movie news. Tons of that. <laughs> now from movie to TV. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest news. Tangled, yeah, is getting a television show. With, it's it kind of came out of nowhere, but absolutely nowhere. Alan Menken is, will be returning as well as Mandy Moore and uh, Zachary Levi. Yeah, the original voices of Rapunzel and Flynn. That was the biggest news. Yeah, to me, I was like, okay, Tangled TV show. Personally, I'm actually a bigger Tangled fan than I am a Frozen fan, so I like this idea. Uh, I but when I heard Zach Levi and and I first heard just about Zach Levi and uh, Mandy, Mandy Moore. Moore. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then I thought, oh, God, that'd be amazing if they got Alan Menken to come back. And then I was like, <laughs> Alan Menken's coming back. New music. Oh, my God, I'm losing my mind. Like, ah, oh, this is great. I mean, yeah, TV show. Like, I'm, uh, what I'm interested to see is, like, they showed, they put a little picture of, like, concept art with it. Um, do you think it's going to be, like, normal, like, 3D tangled like the movie was? Or, like, maybe mm. a 2D ca- cartoon Ooh. animation version? Well, it's for Disney Channel. My assumption, I didn't really put thought into it. My assumption was the computer animation. Mm-hmm. TV, I don't know. I re- I always found it weird when I remember the Buzz Lightyear cartoons were 2D. So I found that strange. I'm hoping it's the computer animation. I feel like in this day and age it will be, mm-hmm. especially since they have their whole Disney Toons unit now and they could work on it. Um, but the interesting thing is it takes place between the end of the movie and the beginning of Tangled Ever After, the short. Mm-hmm. So it's the stuff that happens between them. And and Rapunzel kind of feels like she's not fit to be a princess or a queen <gasps> yet because she doesn't know her people. She doesn't, you know, she's been missing. So it's kind of like getting to know her community and her parents and everything. So what, what, what I'm interested to see is obviously between the end, between that, like she doesn't have her hair anymore. Yeah. So that's kind of like the icon of Tangled. So uh, I mean, it'll, maybe it'll get. We'll have to just get used to Rapunzel with brown hair. It, it grows back. They can dye it. Yeah, why we'll not? see. We'll see what happens. No, she had brown hair and ever after. So yeah. maybe it'll get cut off again. And in Frozen, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, can you imagine if um, soon maybe we'll see a uh, short-haired Rapunzel in the parks? Ooh, another photo op for Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, wouldn't it be interesting? Wouldn't it be interesting? Timeline-wise, I don't know how this works. I'm sure yeah. somebody out there listening does. But what if, like, their appearance in Frozen actually takes place between the end of the movie and the beginning of Tangled Ever After, <laughs> and that and appearance the- in Frozen becomes part of the TV show, and Anna and Elsa are in the Tangled TV show for, like, a millisecond. You're welcome, Disney Channel. Yeah, we're just, like, writing this show for you. Uh, we'll send our resumes along. <laughs> right. new, new writers. Uh, Tangled. <laughs> Pascal is coming back, and so is... Um, Mac. 
Max. Max. Yeah. I the always... Maximus. Maximus. I always get... I'm always hesitant to say Max because I just think of Little Mermaid, yeah. the dog. But yes, Maximus the horse is coming back. So should be cool. I think it's uh, awesome. I'm excited. 2017, they're still at the early stages. Like you said, just out of nowhere. I think that was the coolest thing about this news is that it was just out of nowhere. More TV news. I'm super excited for this. As you know, I love Disney history. I especially love Walt Disney history. Mm-hmm. He's getting a, a new documentary on PBS two nights. It's going to be September 14th and 15th on two. PBS. And did you watch the little commercial? No. Okay. The commercial, it's funny because they, they kind of made it like a little angry. Like, you know, Walt was hard to work with and, oh. and his studio turned against him. And it was like, all right, like... Th- I'm sure it's mostly in favor of him, but the music they chose was like, was really dun 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 dun, like type mm. of stuff. And I was like, oh, interesting. But, and then it was like, uh, you know, Walt always pushed the boundaries of animation. And, and I think one of the best things somebody said was, you know, usually successful people are really successful at one thing. And Walt mm-hmm. Disney, so many things, TV, movies, theme parks, whatever. And, uh, I'm beyond excited about it. Whenever there's something new Walt Disney history related, I'm just like, give me a little nugget of new knowledge because I have so much Disney knowledge crap stuck in my head. I just want something new. And I have in two nights, there's got to be something new there. So hopefully PBS. Yay, September. Excited about that. Uh, something you're, I, I think, more excited about than me is Descendants. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'm like, like, I don't know how I feel about Descendants. I, I'm excited more. More so, I'm curious. Yeah. Like, I like I do really want to see it. I don't know if I'm excited to see it, but I'm, like, super curious to see it. It looks, I mean, it looks exactly what you would expect from the Disney Channel. Yeah. I think when I initially heard the concept, I was like, oh, it's better than that. Like, the concept is better than a Disney Channel original movie. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the demographic they're making it for, I think, will love it. They have an extended trailer out now. I think one of the interesting things is that it's coming out July 31st on Disney Channel. It also is released for sale on DVD and or Blu-ray on July 31st, same day. So that was interesting. Yeah. It's kind of like, there's like, yeah, we know it's a hit. It's Kenny Ortega. <laughs> he made High School Musical Trilogy. I think Disney there's actually... There's music in this, there's dancing, so it's like the same thing. Yeah, I believe Disney actually calls Kenny Ortega the billion dollar man. Because between Newsies, Hocus Pocus, and the three High School Musicals, and I don't know if he's done anything else for Disney, but he's made over a billion dollars for the company. So... Why not? It's kind of cool. Um, I I don't know. We'll see. I will watch it. Of course. <laughs> It's a it's a High School Musical meets Disney villains. Yeah, so Disney character. It's Disney character High School Musical. Good enough. So we'll see on July thirty first. You like Disney characters? You like High School Musicals? We'll see. If they, I do like we'll High School see. Musical, but I will say like High School Musical is one of those things that like had to grow on me. Mm-hmm. First time seeing it, I was not a huge fan of High School Musical. High School Musical two. I actually shut off like three quarters of the way through when he was at a, the golf course singing, singing, uh, bet d- on it, bet on it. There we go. Bet on it, bet. Yeah. I was like, okay, off. <laughs> like I was done with, there's like 15 minutes left of the movie after that. I don't know why I didn't start through it. And then high school musical three, I actually did not see in theaters. It grew on me. I think I always liked the music from high school musical, but the movies took a little while to, for, I'm a fan now. I don't own them on Blu-ray or anything, but I'm a fan. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very interested to see that what music they pull out. Yeah. It'll it'll be interesting, to say the least. So that's Descendants. And finally, a little bit more news here mm-hmm. in the news of short films. Disney is releasing on Blu-ray a whole Disney Shorts collection. There's quite a list of films. Let me just read them off real quickly. On this Disney Shorts collection, we have... Let me uh, guess. Frozen Fever. <laughs> that is there. We've got John Henry, Lorenzo, The Little Match Girl, How to Hook Up Your Home Theater, Prep and Landing Operation Secret Santa, <laughs> Tick Tock Take, uh, The Ballad of Nessie, Tangled Ever After, Paper Man, Get a Horse, Feast, and Frozen Fever. So, That's a lot. It's a lot of shorts. Some of them you probably haven't heard of. Some of them are older. It's a nice collection. Mm-hmm. I actually assumed it was going to be all like modern stuff. I like it because, you know, some of these you can see like Tangled Ever After, I think we said was on my Beauty and the Beast Blu-ray or something. Um, and so some of these are on other discs, 
but a lot of them I haven't heard of being on discs before. So I think it'll be nice. Of course, I think it'll be the only place you can get Frozen Fever. At least as of as of I'm sh- when yeah. it's released, which is August 18th. And I'm sure it'll be on the Cinderella DVD since I don't know. it's attached to that movie. But it's nice to see, like, I know Pixar has done this with their shorts for a yeah. while. So it's nice to see, like, Walt Disney animation shorts on yeah. DVD. And I said August 18th. I, I need to correct myself. The Blu-ray is August 18th. Mm-hmm. But guess where you can get it on August 11th? iTunes, Disney movies anywhere. Oh, there you go. They're really, they're still pushing that thing. I'd be curious. We're all on board. Yeah, I'd be curious to know if any of you have experienced Disney movies anywhere. If you have, comment below because I know nothing about it. I'm just not that digital guy. I like, <laughs> I like discs. So 11th and 18th of August for that. It's a lot of shorts though, but it should be pretty cool. And it looks like it's going to be loaded with special features as well, which is always a thumbs up. Sweet. Um, I do have a little more news, but you know, we're just so. It's just too much news this week. So, so much. We're going to bump it to next week, which just means you have to tune in again next week, which... That's yeah, easy. There are worse things in the world. So tune in next week for more news, but we can't end without trivia. Nope. You want to hit me or shall I hit you? Sure, I'll go first. Okay. So we were talking about Inside Out. Yes, we were. Just a little fun fact. Um, Besides joy, sadness, disgust, fear, and anger, the five emotions... Uh-huh. The the writers considered multiple different emotions as well. Do you know how many? Oh, I would guess they'd probably had somewhere around like 28. 27. 27. 27 is my favorite number. So, like, they had around like 27 different emotions from surprise to pride to trust. But they figured it was like too complicated. So they settled with just five. Hmm. The cool thing I, I heard the directors talk about was how this is about uh the mind and emotions not about like the mind the brain so like cells and stuff like that aren't part of it so i was like that was really smart because that could have gotten confusing so that's fun though what else i found interesting is um you have riley's emotions Mm -hmm. but i did not know the parents and father's emotions are voiced by completely other people oh that's cool and not by like the original letter riley huh that's cool yeah, like the emotions are different. I I see. So they look the same. I see in the future shorts in other people's brains. That's gonna happen. Done. We should. We're gonna do an episode of Disney Coast to Coast <laughs> Just look inside our, brain. our brains. That would be very scary. So, yeah. anywho, uh, yeah, twenty-seven. Okay, I remember the seven dwarfs before they were seven. There were so many dwarfs. Eighty-eight. No, you made that up. Uh, yeah, I did. But. Oh, I was so close. I should have said 27 is really my favorite number. Yeah. I don't know why. It just is. Uh, we were talking about uh, the animated shorts mm-hmm. and the list of shorts that are on the Blu-ray. Two of those are actually Academy Award winning shorts. Do you know which two? Do you want me to go through the list uh, of the shorts again? Get a Horse. No. no not uh, nominated, pa- but it didn't win. Paper Man. Paper Man, yes. And then probably an old one. Nope. Oh. Paper was the uh, last couple ones. Uh, last few were Frozen Fever, Feast, Get a Horse, Paper Man, Tangled Ever After. Feast? Yep, Feast, Feast one. one. Yep. So Feast and Paper Man are two Academy Award winning. Several others that were nominated for Best Short Animated, but those two won. Yeah, I I, I recognize some of them, uh, but most of them are a lot. I remember Lorenzo is like a cat. I love Feast, so that I, I like the animation style. I see. That's interesting. I don't. I like the story more than the animation I like stuff. The story too. Cool. Anyway, folks, <laughs> there are a couple days left to f- to enter our contest. So go to DisneyCoastToCoast.com, Check out the contest tab to win the stuff from Disneyland's 60th anniversary 24 hour day. Just a couple mm-hmm. days left. So do that. And other than that, we can find us everywhere on social media, including Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, SoundCloud, iTunes, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, all that stuff that he said, sometimes multiply. But that just means you have to go to it twice. You have to go to it twice. Make sure you're subscribed and follow everywhere. You guys are becoming super active and talking back and stuff, it's and we awesome. appreciate it. It's super awesome. So thank you for tuning in. Till next time, uh, this has been Disney Coast to Coast. Has it? Yes. It has. It has. That's what it's called. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. No, Hocus Pocus is coming to the Magic Kingdom. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Okay, this made me more excited than it probably should have, but...
if you are a fan of Hocus Pocus like myself, we have been wanting the Sanderson sisters to be a part of Disney theme parks forever.